to In Bed with Alice. In Bed today with me is Rosie Wilby. Hello, Rosie. Hello. I'm <laughs> very happy to share a bed with you. It's great oh, to see you. it's very exciting. I don't share beds with many people. You're oh, very special. I feel honored. Yeah. On what side of the bed do you normally sleep? Well, of course, I sleep on the left because I'm left handed <laughs> and my girlfriend is right handed. So uh, that comes in handy. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. But she actually. She's, she's just over there ignoring us. But okay. she um, she actually swapped sides because she liked sleeping on the left side, but she swapped sides when we got together because she, she's now gone over to the right. Oh, wow. Because oh, so, so I, so. I just tell her what, what so. to do. <laughs> <laughs> she's looking oh, a bit angry. Oh, no. <laughs> we will get her in bed as well. <laughs> yeah, we'll get her in bed as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which brings me actually to your book. Ah. Oh, hello. What a is transition. Is Phenomenal Dead, my first book. Very, very seamless, that link, Alice. That was... Yeah, you are... Uh, um, what are you doing normally? You are... I'm a comedian, normally, yeah. which is how we sort of know each other a little bit. Um... And uh, yeah, I've been touring through a trilogy of shows about love and relationships. Um, the first one was called The Science of Sex. And then um, there was Is Monogamy Dead? And now there's a show called The Conscious Uncoupling about relationship endings. And they all have kind of informed the book. And it's really my exploration of what relationships mean nowadays when a lot of the language, like words like love, mean so many different things. Like I say, oh, I love my girlfriend and I love chocolate and you know but that's two different things one of those yeah. is like an insatiable craving that never goes away and one of those is how I feel about my girlfriend I mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like it's such an overburdened word that means so many different things so I've kind of in my book I've got loads of different words um, that people I met who were having different kinds of relationship structures and having open relationships or multiple relationships they were kind of inventing lots of new words to describe the type of relationships they were having um, and it's not always just about sex I mean obviously we're in a bed and we're maybe thinking about why well, you might be in bed with somebody but it's, it's all about the emotional connections as well as just yeah. kind of sex and all of that stuff so yeah, there was a lot to explore, but maybe too much to explore in a one-hour comedy show. And that's why I ended up writing a whole book. Nice. I have uh, heard a little bit of the book today at your reading. It, it you was did. really amazing. I really loved it. Um, so check this out. You can also find it on the internet, I think. And yes, yes, you can buy it. All good bookshops. Good and bookshops, perfect. Online, Amazon and all of that kind of thing. That, how long, so how long did you research for it? Or how many people did you meet? I mean, that must oh. be crazy stories to Yeah, meet I, I interviewed a lot of different people and I... Um, I did a survey actually um, when I was researching the comedy show, which was four years ago now. So the, this has been going on quite a long time, all this research and interviews and things. And I did a survey asking what counts as cheating in a monogamous relationship. And for some people it wasn't necessarily just having sex or kissing somebody else. There were things like um, falling in love with someone else with no sexual contact or text and email flirting or um, staying up all night talking to somebody else got quite a lot of votes as well and that was quite interesting really wow uh, yeah oh you're worried you're like oh my god now i have to reset my cheating agenda well, but the whole yeah, cheating, yeah but the whole point of it is that really it's about what you discuss with your partner and um these things are all so personal and we kind of assume it's this universal mm. black and white thing that monogamy means a specific thing to everybody whereas what i realized is it doesn't at all and it means different things to different people and all our relationships are unique so yeah. that, that's really, I suppose, what I learnt and, and kind of that's one of the key themes, I guess. Nice. And what is your future project? Do you have another book that you're going to... <laughs> now oh, she's on the market, now Maybe. Continues. I mean, I'm, I'm still touring The Conscious Uncoupling, which is the final part of my trilogy. I'm taking that to Edinburgh Fringe. Nice. Uh, so I'll be doing that there. And... Um, I've also got a project um, spinning off from that because um, that was a solo show about my breakup story. Other people start telling me all their relationship breakup stories, like if they've been dumped by email or text or tweet or, um, you know, or, or in weird situations or you behave in a, a certain crazy way when, when you're ending a relationship. Um, lots, I heard lots of interesting stories and so I started gathering other artists to come and perform at a show called The Breakup Monologues. Um, oh, nice. The yeah, Breakup Monologues. so that's the new Perfect. project. And the idea, the eventual idea for that is to um, get people to write their stories and hopefully we'll have an anthology at the end. Uh, but that's a little way off, but that's the eventual plan for The Breakup Monologues. Nice. One last question. Did your ex-girlfriend see... Oh, has she seen your... <laughs> 
Oh, no. Oh. Did you see your show? Um, well, uh, I mean, the ex-girlfriend that, that the show is about, um, no. Um, I mean, I have changed her name, obviously, to be respectful, and you couldn't really identify who it is. Um, and actually, the show is really even-handed. The point of it is to kind of look at it from both sides and be quite... It's quite warm and compassionate. It's not a really spiteful kind of, oh, you did this to me. <laughs> you know, it's not about that. It's about actually realising that often from both sides, it's quite difficult. Mm. Um, and even the person who, you know, does the dumping, they're probably in a really difficult position as well. Um, so it, it's trying to see both sides. And I think try to do that in a, a relatively relatively nice kind of way. So I don't think I'm really horrible about her, but no, she hasn't actually seen it. I, I get kind of scared. I might see her right in the audience one day and be like, ah, I'm and then just swap to another show. <laughs> there are other ex-girlfriends who've been to see stuff I do and, and they're all, I'm mostly friends with a lot of my exes, which is good. Good, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a lesbian thing. We're all friends with our exes. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It totally, it totally is. I mean, I talk about it in the show. I say, oh, it was a small community, and um, so you had to kind of be friends because there's no one else to be friends with. <laughs> <laughs> this is so true. Yes. Okay, and before you go, you can ask me a question now as well, and I shall answer it. Well, <laughs> I'm always scared of this part. <laughs> oh, I wonder how many people have you shared a bed with? Oh, well, I can't count it on two hands, actually. Oh! <laughs> well, can you count it on bed, This will be oh, this bed. in this bed. <laughs> or like in a, in a other bed. In, in, my, in, in, my, in your in my bed. private bed. In your private bed. Not your public bed, your private <laughs> bed. I have actually a new bed. Uh, it's oh. a folding bed. It's, it folds down from the wall. Oh, really? And in that bed, I have not... Does uh, it? Do, is there any chance it would, like, kind of catapult back into the bed yeah. the wall, so like, if, squashing you both? If the date is not going well, then it jumps up. <laughs> That's the indication. That's the, yeah. It That's kind of, it judges it. it. It tells me, should she stay or should she go? <laughs> wow. It, should, it could kind of just have an ejector side, couldn't it? Yeah, it just sort of catapults <laughs> your date out of the window or something. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. I quite like that bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've so, not answered the question, but we've invented like a new, a, new, a new type of bed. A new type of bed, yeah. Which is very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much. Rosie will be check her out on yeah. Facebook, Twitter, internet and so on and get her book. It is amazing. It is really good. Thank you very much for thank sharing you. the bed with me. Thank and now you. we have to warm up because no, wait a second. What has Ooh. happened in Kia? Oh my god. Oh my there god. Somebody's coming. Right, so yes. We've got that one. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then and then we've got that one. Should we <laughs> right? okay. Should we yeah, just okay. say bye for the camera? Let's say bye. <laughs> Thank you, Rosie Wilby. Bye. Thank you, bye. In bed with Alice, slip in between the sheets. There's an Austrian milkmaid for a sun lesbian treat. She speaks with an accent that's hard to resist. So slide in beside her, cause she's not to be missed. In bed with Alice, she's insanely divine. Pillow talk and secrets, Celestians Fräulein.